So what does pain reveal about God? Connor and Mary Bell share about the insight they gained from being parents dealing with special needs and finding purpose in the middle of the struggle. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So imagine waking up one morning to the unexpected. Your child is pale and fighting to breathe. This was the reality today's guests were faced with, but there's so much more to their story. I know it's going to touch your heart, but before we get to that, joining me around the table is April Simons. How are you? I'm doing great, and I, I love that we have them on today. It's going to be yeah. such a, a great encouragement to people. Yeah. You know, um, Anna Kendall, I feel like this is a program for parents or grandparents or aunts, uncles, whoever may have a special needs Absolutely. Uh, child yes. or adult in their home. Absolutely. It's going to bring courage, I think, and encouragement to know oh, you're not it's alone. Gonna be tremendous encouragement. You know, Joni, years ago, back in the 80s, President Reagan used to have people come into the White House and he'd do di special briefings for Christian leaders or different things like that. Fred and I were there one time and he started the briefing with the Christian family in all its size and shapes and problems and disabilities, the Christian family is the heart of America, the hope of the world, and the divine wow. plan of God. Yes, yeah, so and good. And this is such a family as that. That's right, that's right. Kendra Kelly Dean, how are hey, you? I'm good. I was reading the notes for the show, and I mean, this family, it's just awesome. And I love how they just keep pointing back to God through all yes, of it. Yeah. He is yes. so faithful and yes. so good and is with them in everything. Amen. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing great. We love to hear people's stories. Oh, my goodness. And when they can encourage us that we can walk this walk in life, yes. no matter what comes our way, yeah. it, they're so encouraging. You know, God is faithful in, in the good times and the trying times. That's right. And so many times we just want to talk about the good times, but we're all going to go through things, right? Yeah. If we live long enough, we absolutely yeah, we sure <laughs> are. Amen. Well, you know, today's guests are here to talk about their book entitled Counted Worthy. Please help me welcome Pastor Connor and Mary Bells to the table. Good morning, guys. Tell Pastor Connor he's going to have to help Mary I know. <laughs> up on the chair. Yeah. She's a little tiny thing. Well, welcome today, guys. Thank you for Thank having us. So good to have you. You know, they've been on an unexpected journey that has given them unique insight in dealing with suffering. As parents of two special needs children, Connor and Mary have discovered what only comes from pain-tested faith, and they're here to tell us more about that. Let's kind of start back at the beginning. When you two got married, Mary, you didn't know that you were going to be in the ministry, did you? No. And so, not <laughs> over it. <laughs> she said she thought you thought you were marrying a landscape architect. That's right. right. That's right. I was a really good landscape architect's <laughs> wife. <laughs> a pastor's wife is a little different. Yes. Well, I want to say you're a really good pastor's wife and yes. mother. Yeah. And we're very proud of you. So. Tell us a little bit about the call into ministry. How did you navigate that before any of this other stuff happened? Well, so we already had our two um, older children, Catherine and Coleman. We were serving, um, it felt like constantly at our um, <laughs> church at the time. We were helping in student ministry and um, just had a passion for the students. And um, it was during that time that Connor felt um, just the Lord just stirring in him something more. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and, and he told me about it and I was very spiritual and I said, well, maybe we should just volunteer more. <laughs> uh, to which the Lord said, no. Like that. We, we had exceeded our volunteer hours. Um, and so um, it wasn't long after that I felt like it was not a surprise. I had seen the calling on his life. I had seen the gifting mm -hmm. um, and... So we sought wise counsel, we prayed about it, and um, he started just taking some seminary classes. And what was the first class you took? 
Old Testament survey. Uh-huh. So I thought, well, he'll probably, I mean, if you're going <laughs> to dislike something, it'll probably be that. By the time he gets, <laughs> in, by the time he gets to numbers, it'll right. be done. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> and so he started with that, and the first night came home and said, Oh my gosh, I just love it. I love it so much. And <laughs> was so hungry um, just to learn. And so Aww. that just started us on, wow. on a journey of we're going to walk in obedience. We're going to take the next mm-hmm. step. Yeah. Um, but you were in agreement. That's what I like, yes. Connor, is that you talk to her about it. Mm-hmm. How important is it for a couple to be in agreement? Well, it's critical. I mean, uh, I, I believe God's design for human flourishing uh, happens in cooperation, and the family, I think, is where that begins. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Mary is my wise counsel. Mm-hmm. And so uh, so we have worked uh, very closely together, not only to navigate our calling into the ministry, but then obviously with all that God has entrusted to us mm-hmm. with our family and our girls. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. Here you have these two beautiful kids called into ministry, mm-hmm. serving God, and you yep. said you were all in. Yep. Surrendered, that's my word. Yes. Sure. Fully surrendered. Yes. And uh, you get pregnant. Mm-hmm. So t- take us through that, if you would, Mary. So I got pregnant, had a very typical pregnancy. Everything, All the appointments checked out. Everything was looking good, measuring good. I was feeling good. Um, and then about 35 weeks, I went into labor, um, which was not mm-hmm. typical for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, Were we, they doing an ultrasound, like, to look at everything? Did everything they look? had done a couple, yeah. but I was not considered a high-risk pregnancy. Okay. So it was just the standard two or yeah. three sonograms that you get, and... Um, everything looked great. And um, I went into labor, which was not typical. We called the doctor and he said, well, come on in and, uh, you know, we'll take a look. And Mm -hmm. I was in fact in labor and delivered Libby that afternoon. And we knew immediately that something was was different. Something was wrong. Okay. So Connor, uh, when Libby was born, what happened in the delivery room? Yeah, so uh, with our older two kids, uh, they Mary uh, gave birth. Uh, doctors and nurses were in the room. They kind of cleaned the baby up, hand the baby back. Mm-hmm. With Libby, uh, doctors and nurses were in the room. Then more doctors and nurses were in the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot yeah. of conversation among themselves, but nobody was talking to us. Had you oh, seen man. her yet? So uh, not really. Not. They they were working on her. Oh, okay. and, uh, and so it just didn't, it didn't have any of the experience that the other two had and and they took Libby away to the NICU and uh then and I you went just to had a baby so we mm-hmm. all of us yeah. sitting here yeah. we, we know what that's yeah. like yeah. Right. Yes. so you just had went through all of that and yeah. you're expecting to hold this little bundle yes. mm-hmm. so you have to be feeling like what in the world yes and then they came and brought they took Connor I, they said um, I can go see and her. said he could go but I I couldn't go yet oh, um God. and so that was very difficult oh, uh, I guess so to yeah, when I went in the NICU, she was hooked up to stuff, and that was obviously all new. Mm-hmm. And so the uh, uh, doctor told us the, that they had detected a heart murmur, and she was likely going to be discovered to have a heart defect, and it just wow. started this process. I remember going back to the room and telling Mayor, uh, something's not right. And the, in her feet, there was the notice yeah. there was something uh, We different. call them... Uh, uh, the medical term is funky feet in the Bales house. And so they were uh, pointed <laughs> oh, out wow. and up. Uh, did you notice that as we a newborn? Did. Yeah, yes. immediately yeah. when she was born, they were just yeah. funky feet. And uh, and uh, and so she had these issues that we were trying to navigate and resolve. But they told us that she would need heart surgery when she was 10 weeks old. And uh, and while she was in recovery from surgery, they, they recommended some genetic testing. And uh, in... And then in January of 2009, the geneticist called us, mm-hmm. and everything changed. Mm-hmm. And what did they say, Mary? She just told us it was very, very severe. Mm-hmm. And she said, um, if you had not already repaired her heart, I would tell you not to, wow. um, because she probably will not live past oh, infancy. Okay. The life expect- oh, wow. expectancy was about two years of age. Wow. And so and what she, exactly was wrong with her? I mean, there was the heart issue, but what is it with this genetic she, she has this a, gene a that's genetic different? Genetic abnormality called trisomy 16p, very very rare. At the time when the doctor talked to us about this, uh, there were about 30 known reported cases, um, and uh, wow. and so just it was very rare error, um, and. Uh, and there was not a lot of information on that. And what were the um, side effects from that, if you will? They were kind of all over the place. Yeah. I mean, things that she said, you know, Libby had some of the things like the heart defect and um, 
there were some feet abnormalities, not the ones that Libby had. Uh -huh. um, but I think just given that there were only 30 cases, the, oh, the wow. markers were kind of all over the map. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we looked at some of that, and at the time she was um, so small, she had, she had not started having seizures at that time. That would have been one of the markers. Mm -hmm. um, heart defect. Um, would have been one of them. But not going to uh, develop normally. No, we were yeah. told it affects a lot of genetic material and and uh, she would be very severely special needs. And mm -hmm. I remember... So she wouldn't be able to walk. Right. She wouldn't be able to talk. So neurologically. Neurologically. Yes. In fact, she told us that Libby would not have emotion mm -hmm. on her own and she would not be able to recognize people and not know who no we are. No intentional movements. Yeah. No. They would actually be wrong about a exactly. lot of this. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. They'd be wrong about... Okay. Yeah. So I, I loved it earlier when you just, your transparency, yes. Mary, is going to help so many people watching today. But you said when you started finding out all this information and you just had a thought in talking to the Lord, what did you say? That I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to do this. Um, mm -hmm. You're I, just like, I just don't think I can do it. Yeah. I, I just felt ill-equipped mm -hmm. um, to tackle something mm -hmm. like this. And I think, you know, the doctors, it was such an unknown diagnosis that even they were not able to give me a lot of answers. Um, they had a lot of questions. Um, we have yet to find a doctor that has actually treated a, trial, a child with trisomy 16P. Because you said most of the time those babies would miscarry. Would miscarry. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think for me, I just wanted answers. I just mm -hmm. wanted somebody, sure. I Absolutely. really just wanted somebody to tell me it was gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I didn't have that. And that's where my relationship with the Lord just, I mean, I plunged deeper mm -hmm. with yeah. him um, because he very quickly told me, doctors may not be able to tell you, but I already know. I mean, yeah. I've numbered yeah. the hairs on her head. Yeah. 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 I have already written all of her days in my book. Yeah. and um, Take it day by day yeah. and trust me. Yeah. Yes. Which that has got to be one of the oh most difficult goodness. things to do. I mean, no matter, there are people watching right now and you so can relate to what we're talking about, but it's just so important for you to understand as a believer, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust mm -hmm. and we're living in a fallen world. There are things that happen. There are tragedies that take place. But at the end of the day, God mm -hmm. showed up yeah, and absolutely. he is faithful. Yeah. It may not have the scenario that we thought we would have. Yeah. And it may not have the ending that we thought yeah. mm -hmm. we would have. But was he faithful? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. What about you, Connor, as the father, the dad? What were your emotions or thoughts or what were you saying to God? Well, um, I would say this is where I discovered that my theology of suffering um, was very anemic because I think I thought, Lord, we're surrendered to the ministry and, uh, and we're doing everything we think we're supposed to and, and giving and serving and doing. H why would you do this to our little girl? Yes. And, uh, and I read one day in my time with the Lord in John chapter 9, the disciples asked a really logical question about a man who was born with blindness. Mm -hmm. Who sinned, this mm -hmm. man or his parents? Right. And it was a, a, modern, a common understanding in that day. Um, and uh, it felt very similar to the questions I had been asking. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Mm -hmm. And if you know the story, then you read further down, he puts mud on the man's eyes, he washes and he's, he's healed. But the declaration of workmanship came prior to the healing ever taking place. And so I discovered that whether Libby's healing came on this side of eternity or the other, God was going to work. Mm -hmm. So how did this affect your ministry? Well, it's still affecting it. Um, our commitment as a family that's been entrusted with these girls is that uh, we're not going to lie about the hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to try so to good. smooth over the pain. Yeah. It, uh, I good. think you hold in tension the reality that life is bad yeah. at times yeah. and, and God is always good. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, let's, okay, so this happens with Libby. You have, your, you have Catherine and... Coleman. Coleman. And now you've got Libby, special needs. And I, I love it. The, the kids just kind of took ownership. Of that's their baby sister. They're going to help yeah. care for her and protect her. Then you get pregnant with the fourth child. Mm -hmm. So did you plan that pregnancy? We did. We did. Okay. We prayed about it and felt like <laughs> it took us a little while to get our sea legs underneath this again. Wow. And we dove headfirst into therapies and specialists, and it took us a while. But we prayed about it and believed like that God was not done uh, yes. uh, with us and our family. And, uh, 
and we got pregnant, and Mary had a totally typical pregnancy, just what, like all the others. Three years later, maybe? Huh? Yeah. Uh, they're three years three apart. Three years apart. And uh, we saw all the specialists, and Mary was now high risk because of Libby, and, and just got all of the prenatal care. Um, and so what did the ultrasounds show during the pregnancy? Everything looked fine? Everything looked fine. Everything was measuring normal. Um, the only thing that we ever saw um, during my pregnancy was that she had some cysts on one of her kidneys. Um, mm. But that was not mm. really alarming yeah. um, to anybody. And so you um, carried her to what? How many weeks? Um, about 38 weeks. 38 weeks. Wow. You go in to deliver. It's totally typical. I mean, again, Mary went into labor on her own, and, uh, and Hannah came, and uh, the doctors, uh, you know, were in the room and giving care, and, uh, and she didn't have, like, the malformation of her feet. She didn't have the congenital heart defect. Um, she was having a little difficulty catching her breath, so they did want to take her to the NICU. I think some of that was just the conditions in the moment, but some of it was probably uh, just precautionary because of her older sister. And uh, How did she look? Did she look fine? Yeah, she looked perfect to us. I mean, yeah, I mean, looking back now, I mean, I remember holding her and thinking, you know, she looks great, you know, but looking back at her baby pictures now. You can see. I can see. Yeah. Um, I mean, she looked a lot like Libby. Libby. Mm -hmm. Were y'all uh, secretly kind of holding your breath? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. A and I think we did for several weeks after. I think both of us felt, even looking at her and doctors saying she doesn't have the heart defect and her feet look great and... Yeah. Um, she, you know, she stayed in the NICU for a little while, but she got to go home earlier. And um, both of us, I think, just, there was something. Yes. yes. So then you did the testing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what happened? So uh, the pediatrician called um, on a Friday afternoon and uh, said that the genetic test results were in and that the laboratory had actually run the results twice because they were confident they had made a mistake. The director of the laboratories called himself spoke with our pediatrician, and our pediatrician asked us to come and meet with him. And we went. My mom came over to keep the littles, and Mary and I went together, and the pediatrician told us that despite the mathematical impossibilities, Hannah had the exact same diagnosis as her sister, oh, and, wow. uh, and we were undone all over mm -hmm. again. The pediatrician was crying. We were crying, and in a, a moment, our, our world kind of came crashing back down. Oh, I can imagine. So, Mary, did you feel at any point, especially around this time when you heard the news, did you ever feel like giving up? For sure. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, yeah. Well, I, your prayer the was, whole pregnancy was. Yeah, I have, I actually was, um, I was very fearful my entire pregnancy with Hannah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was doing a, a Bible study at our church and um, my journal just the entire nine months was, Lord, you can do anything and mm -hmm. I trust you just don't give me another child with special needs. Mm. Um, to me, that was my greatest fear. I think everybody has um, one, one fear that can be paralyzing, and that was my one fear. Um, and over and over, he just said, do you trust me? Let's talk about your processing, because the Lord spoke to so, you very strongly, and I think this is this such was a, good a moment part. that forever changed my life, our mm -hmm. family, our ministry. So we gathered ourselves together and and got into headed back to the car. Before I turned the ignition over, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke as clearly to me as I'm speaking to you and said, "I have counted you worthy to get to do this twice." Mm -hmm. And uh, I turned to Mary to and I said, uh, "You're not going to believe what God just said." And she, mm -hmm. and I explained it, and she said, "I, I heard the same thing. I feel the same thing." Mm -hmm. And uh, and so that's it. It changed our life. And I do believe from the bottom of my heart that God has counted us worthy yeah. to steward Amen. these little lives for as long as they're in our care. And I think that's how I understand suffering. Yeah. I think that it is something as painful it is, as it is, that is something you've been counted worthy. Yeah. And um, they're out living mm -hmm. because I mean, for yeah. this particular condition, they're yes. saying couldn't live past two. Right. And now they're 13 and 10. Mm -hmm. And then, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> yes. she gets pregnant again. Talk about faith But you know what? I, just, I, I haven't asked you this, but I just have a sense that there was, you just had a knowing that everything was going to be okay. I did. Isn't that something? It, I feel like with, with Campbell, who is our fifth child. The exclamation mark. The exclamation point <laughs> at the end of all of our sentences. Mm -hmm. um, 
I just, I, I mean, it was the Lord once again telling me, hey, you're not in control, which he has to remind me of <laughs> on a daily basis. But um, I just, I thought it was so funny. The funny thing is, uh, <laughs> Honor didn't think it was funny, but <laughs> even in Took college, even in college when we were dating, um, we talked about that we wanted to have five children. Wow. Um, after we had Hannah, it was very quick. We shut it down. You know, we said, That's it. We need to be. Well, I mean, we you got, obviously, you got your hands yeah. full. Yes, ma'am. Yes. This yes. is a 24 7. We couldn't right. handle anymore. Yeah. Um, and. But then, surprise. The Lord. So how, bypassed all the things and uh, said, you're going to have another one. And yeah. Watch this. That's what Jesus said. And I thought, I mean, I, I laughed for maybe nine months. Yeah. Like Sarah. And I just thought you know it how was Sarah amazing. Felt, right? Yes. Well, I thought maybe it's a boy and we will name him Isaac. Uh, but I just thought. This is good. I had I had very little to do with this decision, and the Lord is totally in control, yep. and He is just giving us this amazing blessing. And um, so and that's Campbell what was she born is. and yeah, totally fine, totally fine. Me the just, icing on the cake. Yeah, <laughs> she is like she's never had a bad day. Yeah, oh, she's amazing. That's how old she is? Yes, she's eight yes. years old. Eight she's now. finishing her second grade oh, year at well. school this week, and um, and she met all the milestones. Oh, you got to yeah. watch all of she's that. that. That's one of the special the things. things is that with uh, our older two kids, we just rush the milestones. Yeah. You know, when they toddled, we wanted them to walk, and when yeah. they babble, we want <laughs> right. them to speak. Yeah. Just kind of rush through those things, mm -hmm. and with. Libby and Hannah, we've grieved everyone, oh, and uh, and yeah. we still do. Yeah. And with Campbell, it's like the Lord gave it back, oh, and yeah. so we yeah. soak it up. And I like still you don't, don't have to walk right now. I don't no. want her to say her words right. <laughs> Mary's like she's going to go to college. I'm like, yeah. I don't she care if she can't pronounce it or not. You know? Well, I have a question great. about your older children, mm -hmm. the first two, because I'm sure that this was quite a weight that they had to carry as well, you know. Um, but for another family that might be going through something like this. How did you talk to your children about this? How did you encourage them? But more importantly, there's a lot of people out there that they mean well, they do, mm -hmm. and um, but sometimes they don't always know what to say. Oh yeah, tell us the people. wrong things to say. <laughs> yes. yeah. There's so many wrong this. things people can say. Yeah. yeah. I wrote a chapter in the book called <laughs> Cruel. I mean, because uh, uh, sometimes there is a cruelty that comes along with suffering, mm -hmm. and I think that. Um, I, I encourage people to say three things when anyone endures any type of suffering or pain. And the first is, I'm so sorry. It's an acknowledgement that what you're suffering yeah. is real. Yeah. Um, this is awful. That's an acknowledgement that it's not yeah. the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And I love you. Mm. And that just means I'm here, I'm standing at your side. And so, but, but you know. Don't say you understand. No, ma'am, no. because Please don't suffering is shared, but it's yeah. not all the same. Exactly. No. Yeah. And I understand what you're going through. People told me that when no. Mark is passed and they're standing there, husband and wife, and I'm like, no, you don't. You don't understand yeah. what that felt. Yeah. But I mean, it's the thing, that is so good. People just yeah. to say, you know what, mm -hmm. we love you. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're praying for you. Yes. We're sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, and then you have that group that will say, well, if you really had faith, uh -uh. did you have any of those? Mm. Please tell me you didn't have any of those. I did. No! Did you yeah. really? Oh, for oh. the love. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I had a somebody very sweetly gave me a book very early on um, all about if you have faith, then the Lord can heal your child. And you know God does heal. Yeah. I mean, he's still... Absolutely. I mean, well, look how long they've lived. You're right. But, yeah, but I'm just difficult. saying the sensitivity, guys, please. Yes. I mean, Amen. my goodness. Um, this just drives me crazy, I have to tell you. But how did you respond, I mean, to that? I mean, what, what was the most hurtful thing that people did or said? Because this is something for our audience to learn. Well, there's a couple stories in the book. Um, probably... The wheelchair? The, probably the wheelchair would be my favorite. Um, we had just gotten Libby a new wheelchair. It kind of looked like a stroller, um, but it was actually a wheelchair. And... Um, I was pushing her through the halls and a lady stopped me and said, I love that stroller. That is so cool, which it was. And I mm -hmm. said, oh, thanks. It's actually a wheelchair and we just got it. We're really proud of it. And she said, well, can I get one for my normal kid? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that, that's, uh, that's, Connor, what about you? Uh, you know, I've had people, uh, my girls are 13 and 10. They drool 
<laughs> they make noises at unusual times. And sometimes to self-soothe, they both still like to take a pacifier. And I don't care. Yeah. I want them to take their passy. And if either. it makes them happy, yes. and yeah. I don't care. But we get stares sometimes. Most people are, are tremendously kind and gracious yeah. and tender. Yeah. But we've had people say, well, she's far too old to take a passy and oh uh, things like that. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. I, I, you know, uh, my, my kiddos have a harder time with it than Mary and me. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. I'll bet they and do. And it's, it's made better human beings out of your kids. You have to admit yeah. that. Yes. It has. So yes. what did you say to them and how have you encouraged them? So the especially? Lord in both of those instances um, had a friend of ours close by that ran interference on both of them wow. and told us to keep walking and yeah. they handled it. I'm so grateful for what God has done in our three typical, I put that in air quotes, um, <laughs> kiddos. Um, they're so sensitive to the needs of others. Mm -hmm. um, they're yes. quick to open doors yeah. and pay attention to people that are navigating, trying yeah. to you know, so get from good. one place to the other. And, uh, and, and they're sensitive about those kinds of, of things and just fiercely protective mm -hmm. of their little sisters mm -hmm. and, uh, or their big sister. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I love the fact that um, you said whether God heals on this side or the other yeah. side. That eternity is a long, long, long time. Amen. And Libby and Hannah will, I just had that visual of them yeah. leaping and dancing. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. And yes. singing. Like when you were talking about them, I could almost see yep. a picture of what that will look like because eternity is a long time mm -hmm. and you have been counted worthy. Yes. You know, counted worthy. I tell you what, you need to get the book because I believe it'll encourage so many of you. And, and there are even some of you watching right now that you're like, you know, I thought I had a hard day today with yeah. my kids, right. but you heard this story and you're like, you know what? I need to have a better attitude yeah. about where I am right mm -hmm. now because you look at what Connor and Mary have gone mm -hmm. through and, um, and they're stronger on the other side of it. And the church, you're there, you're the lead pastor at the Prosper Prestonwood yes, Baptist Campus. The North Campus of Prestonwood. Yes, and y'all have like special needs, like we a big program. We have a tremendous program. special needs yes. ministry. I'm so Very grateful vibrant. for churches that so are able to make that investment and, mm -hmm. and see families' lives changed. So those of you that have special needs kids, I mean, this is where I would, I mean, they have made room for this. And I think that's so yes. admirable. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that no matter what you're facing, God is right there with you. He has counted you worthy to walk this unique path, but he's also equipped you and will be with you through it all. The pain you feel is real, but I want you to know something. He will carry you to the other side. So again, today, if you're watching, you've been struggling with difficult circumstances or unexpected pain, that's why that number's on the screen. We want you to call. We would love to pray with you. We have amazing prayer partners standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also go to daystar.com and click on prayer. Send your prayer request in. That way we pray over all the prayer requests that come in from around the world. Well, I want to thank Pastor Connor and Mary for sharing their story with us. Again, we just barely scratched the surface. So again, be sure to pick up a copy of Connor's book, Counted Worthy, a Father's Perspective on the Theology of Suffering. It's available now. And for more on their ministry, you can visit them online at connorbells.com. Calm. Do you go and speak and as sure. opportunities yes, open as up? Yes, ma'am, I'm able, absolutely. Okay, all right, all right. Well, remember to join the conversation after the program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We'd love to hear how today's chat has touched your life. I want to thank you for watching. Be encouraged today and just know, take it one day at a time. God is going to be faithful. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you to the end of the world. And that's a long way. So you're not alone. Again, call that prayer line if you need prayer today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.